Hey folks, it's Fernando doing another video for more survivalists and today we're going to be putting together a realistic bug out bag. There's lots of videos and articles about this. In many cases I noticed that they just focus just maybe too much on, on firearms and weapons even though realistically you're not likely to need that much of, a, of a weapons in most likely disasters and sometimes they just focus too much on certain things such as, as camping and outdoors and bushcrafting which if disaster strikes you're not going to be heading to a park and just stay there camping you're going to be looking for uh, ways of uh, getting back on your feet so before I get started and this is going to be a rather long video if you prefer to read it instead most of the contents that I'm going to be addressing in this video is what I've written in my book Bugging Out and Relocating I've actually posted the chapter on putting together a bug out bag the chapter on, on uh, bug out bags of my book I'm going to be leaving the link there below it's posted in my website in case you prefer to read that instead alright so let's get started and yeah this is going to be somewhat of a, of a longer video first the actual bag alright we have um, a bag that it's not massive, it's not huge. The idea is not putting together a, um, a 70 liter a backpacking kit, all right? It, it, we're not going backpacking, we're not uh, camping, we're just taking with us what we've managed to grab in one, two minutes that we've had when uh, your house was burning down, when there was a, a disaster heading your way, when for whatever reason you have to leave wherever it is that you are, all right? You're not uh, going uh, camping to the nearest national park and you're not engaging in, in combat with Al Qaeda in Iraq or Middle East or wherever it is that you are, all right? In terms of the kind of bag that uh, I think makes a, a good uh, choice, this is a, a simple, normal uh, black day pack. Some folks are more prone to like the idea of a, um, of, of a camouflage uh, backpack because it, it's uh, harder to detect. There's cases, there's a, you know, a philosophy going along those lines. Then there's other people that like the idea of having a bag that is very visible, which uh, also has its merits. A, a red bag, something that's very visible, not likely to be forgotten or easily lost. Uh, I think that do, both have their merits. I think that the best compromise overall is just going unnoticed. In the crowd, you're just one more guy with a backpack just going your way in a, a simple black a day pack such as this one. It's sturdy, solid enough for uh, so as to eff effectively carry whatever it is that you need to take uh, in it, uh, but it doesn't grab that much attention. It's also pretty light. You don't need a huge backpack. All right. All right, so let's get started. Inside, the first thing you probably notice is something that you don't see a lot in many kits, uh, which is uh, room, actual space. I like having a little bit of extra room in case there's more stuff to take along with you that you hadn't considered before. All right, spare room can be very practical as well. Sometimes you just throw in uh, a jacket in there or you just pack the jacket that you, you had on you or, or other clothes that you have. You're just walking longer distances. Basically a bug out bag is so as to get you wherever it is that you have to go. If you're gonna be getting there in a day or two of walking and keep in mind that the average person can walk at about a, a three to four mile uh, per hour speed, then if you can get there in one day or two, you don't need a, a ton of stuff. First thing that you notice here, and the heaviest thing that you have in this bug out bag, is water. Something that lots of folks just don't keep in mind. They have maybe filters, they have bladders or bottles that are planning on filling on the go. Not realistic. You actually need the water, not just ways of filtering and purifying it, but the actual water. This is the kind of thing that you're going to be thirsty right uh, as you start walking this is the kind of thing that maybe you're going to be using to wash up your face if there was a a, a disaster your dirty bloody uh, face cover of dust i'm thinking right now of 9 11 those images of people just running into the stores grabbing bottles of, of water and squirting them on their faces so as to wash off the dust and debris that's the kind of thing that happens during disasters if it's something uh, less dramatic, but you have to walk longer distances when walking, water is the main thing that you need. Two liters of water, pretty heavy, but it is important, so you have to keep it. Don't just uh, leave that behind and focusing on things, uh, maybe having more, more ammunition or, more, or, a, or, or a rifle and not having actual water, which is much more likely to be needed. On the outside, I have 
uh, another water bottle, right? I have several of these. I have the, the clean canteen um, stainless steel bottle. This is pretty much the same. It's actually exactly the same, but it's from a, a different brand. Uh, I just have several of these because I, I like them. I know their work. I've had actually bad experience with the uh, SIG bottles. Uh, the internal lining, the made of uh, some sort of plastic, just peeled off. Even if I, even if uh, I just use water in there, just peeled off. So I really do not recommend the sick water bottles. Stainless steel, at least for me, is the way to go, and I like it better than than plastic. Not only because it's more solid, stronger, and as you see, it takes bumps very well, uh, but also you can cook in it. All right, you can heat water, and you can somewhat cook to some extent in plastic. It, it can be done. Now, how practical is it and can you do that several times? No. Uh, for that sort of thing, uh, with a, a stainless steel bottle, you can actually cook on it, clean it up, fill it with water, keep on going. Then we have an actual filter. This is a, a Life Straw filter. Uh, yeah, it's not ideal, but it's a way of drinking uh, water on the go and it's pretty compact so if you find a, a source of water that is not really looking very reliable and you don't want to be risking it as you should I mean any any source of water that you're not sure about it it's better to just um, drink it through a, a filter such as this one compact and will get you out of an emergency when needed then I have several ways of improvising shelter on the go. I have here uh, one of these uh, poncho liners. This is for a child, but for a you know adult, maybe a little bit small. But I do have a kid, so I have to <laughs> think of the, that as well. So I have several of these. I have actually, this is a small child poncho. I have a, a tarp here. It's actually just a, a dust sheet. This is the kind of thing that you can use as to improvise shelter and then a proper emergency shelter. It's basically this a uh, mylar type of material, but uh, in, in this kind of format so as to uh, improvise uh, a, a tent. Is this great? No, by, by any means it's not. But it's something that if it's raining and you need a place to stay dry for a little bit, these two combined, along with some of the other stuff that we have inside there, we're gonna be getting into a second, you can, you can put a, um, a tarp over your head, you can put a, 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 an emergency shelter, right? You can even wrap yourself in this. It's uh, not ideal, it's not very uh, resistant either. It's quite um, this mylar uh, material, it's kind of fragile as well, but it's gonna be keeping you uh, somewhat dry and somewhat uh, warm. Uh, trash bags, they have a ton of uses. You can even improvise more ponchos, more um, uh, waterproof. Uh, you know, cover yourself with it and, and put a, a couple holes in it so as to put your arms through it. Is this something I'm going to be using if, uh, you know, I don't have to? No, of course. I have uh, one poncho here. I have another one inside. So it's a, the kind of multi-use that you can actually get out of this um, if, if you just have to. In terms of food. Not a lot. I don't see why you should have a, a ton of food if you can get wherever it is that you're going in just a day or two of walking. In general, you're able to reach your destination. If you have to walk for more than a couple days, then food is something that you have to think a little bit more about it. But in general, if you're reaching your destination in a day or two of, water, uh, of walking, um, a few uh, protein bars or power bars, uh, some chocolate, energy drink, and this is dextro energy candy, not great food by any means, uh, but it is a, a source of energy. Um, not a, a great nutritional value, but when you need to walk, when you need uh, to do physical activity, sugar, in this t case, uh, the dextrose, which is gonna be assimilated even faster, it does have a place. Not the kind of thing that would be eating on a regular basis, but for an emergency, yeah. I'm trying to go through stuff as fast as possible. Uh, small kit here with another poncho. All right, another poncho here. I have actually another one there as well. Okay, so two adult ponchos and a child's poncho. And ways of improvising more with the trash bags if needed. 
uh, a space blanket, one of these emergency blankets. Okay. All this material can be used to improvise shelter, improvise clothing, cordage. This is actually a Tegnora and Kevlar cordage, which is very, very strong. A bit more. As you see, this is a more of a, a self-contained little emergency kit on its own right. And this is a little bag that I got from IKEA of all places. And I like buying several. Same with a uh, with a bag, uh, with a backpack. Um, if if you find something that's uh, priced right, just uh, buy two or three and make more kits for yourself. Dextrose respirator. I've covered several times before how important it is. You just never know what's going to be happening in terms of uh, of, a, of a disaster. So it's good to stick by the rules of three in terms of uh, you cannot live three minutes without air. Air, don't ever take it for granted. Fires, dust, uh, chemicals. You just don't know what could be compromising air. You just know that you do need it. So you need a way of, of breathing safe clean air that's what the the collapsible uh, respirator comes into place as you see it's pretty flat you do have the valve but in my experience the valve does help a lot in keeping their general respirator drier and not a, as moist and it, it allows you to walk walk better do more activity better uh, and breathing in and out better in general keeping the mask drier as well this is uh, something that i have several of as well in different kits here I have a, a proper changing modes there for a second more cordage yeah, I think the other mode was better more cordage little candle a flat roll of tape signaling mirror and a small a survival tin you know with, with lift different little contents I have a, a video on the contents of us of a survival a tin kit you know little things that you generally find in these and some uh, aluminum foil in there as well spare set of clothes uh, this is something that is very important and many times we uh, folks don't think about it you just don't know what's going to be happening in terms of be being soaked wet maybe your your clothes are are torn if you uh, remember some of the dramatic images of uh, of the uh, boston bombing during the marathon you saw all these people some of them were still you know uh, hurt injured but uh, what you noticed was that pretty much everyone that was affected had torn clothes the, to the clothes had been ma in many cases ripped off their bodies uh, and that's something that you know you just don't like I mean many cases I, I've uh, found myself uh, you know caught by rain or maybe doing some uh, outdoors uh, kind of activity or uh, shooting in the range in some uh, more intense uh, shooting sessions where you just don't stop because it's raining because it's, that's actually part of, of the proper training so after an entire day of shooting you're all soaking wet and you don't have a set of clothes to, uh, to change into yeah so here I have um, socks underwear a shorts and a t-shirt all I think it's all black but you know it's the kind of thing that I could use maybe someone else can use it as well if needed and in my vehicle in my car one of the things I do keep is a proper set a proper set of a change of clothes for each family member I've had many times in which it has coming very very handy you know very you know in maybe not a dramatic fashion but maybe one of the kids got wet while you know hiking stepped into a pond or something like that or something along those lines needed a change of clothes or one time actually one of my kids uh, spilled food on himself when when having a uh, lunch and we just went to the car changed into clothes and uh, kept on with our with our daily activity spoon the power of the spoon not only a, a spork nothing fancy just a normal regular spoon why this one well because this one actually fits and this is something that I did a, a video about because it makes a lot of sense at least to me uh, the spoon hammered a little bit on the sides fits right there so as I said before you can use this for cooking uh, you know making a soup or cooking something as a cooking container it's not a proper mask kit but it is a stainless steel container in which you can cook in but you need a way of getting to what's inside with this spoon you can reach the the actual bottom of it scrap there 
pull out food and just eat out of it and this is all you need if I would um, if I would have the need for maybe more food if I would have to maybe walk for three four days and I had to include in this type of kit some actual food maybe some pasta or something like that then I would throw in something along these lines uh, solid fuel cooker you know these little tablets you can uh, cook a, a couple meals just with what's inside this little box here and use this as a stand for maybe using some twigs, a little bit of wood on the go so as to cook. This combined with that would get you out of the problem. Uh, wipes. These are baby wipes. There's more a uh, hardware a hardcore a industrial type of a, of wipes which I've seen in hardware stores for you know people working and they need something to clean up baby wipes are you know these, these are okay these are pretty strong <laughs> as, as they come uh, but some kind of wipes has to clean up baby wipes the nice thing about them is that they're pretty much um, good in terms of skin allergies they're pretty good in terms of that because of course designed for a for a baby um, maybe not as hard use as some of the industrial ones but at least have uh, wipes in there uh, when you need to uh, clean up your hands uh, as I, I was speaking before um, uh, dirty bloody wet you need to clean up a little bit it really helps morale it's, it just makes you feel better overall and it has a practical use as well to clean up uh, when we need to do so and yes uh, a knife of course you do need uh, a knife in your in your kit this is a, a bussy this is a boss jack knife uh, yeah, it, it is kind of expensive and I'm gonna be doing after this video actually I'm gonna be doing a video on survival knives what I think makes sense in terms of survival knives the different options And what I think it's overall a good option. I think this kind of knife makes a lot of sense It's a um, very sturdy knife as you can see it's It's not huge, but it's about a six inch blade and I know that it's very tough I know that with this knife I can pry I can just poke, cut, smash my way through whatever needs to be uh, broken. You can even pry open uh, um, a jam door after an earthquake. You can even pry open a, a car door in a car accident. I think that Jerry Bussey, the, the guy behind the Bussey, uh, the Bussey company, I think that he actually used this, this exact same knife to pry open a door when he came across a, a car accident. Um, if you know what these uh, type of knives are, are capable of, the steel in particular is very good. You know, there's a lot of, of hype at sometimes floating around, but it is true that it is a very solid, very good knife, and this steel is very good. Uh, do you always need a $200, $300 knife? Absolutely not. You, I'm going to be covering in another video after this one some other options, but this, if you have the money, it's uh, definitely one of the best knives. And I think for the size, it's not huge, even though I generally like bigger knives. This is a, a knife that will uh, get you out of most of these, uh, uh, in these problems. I'm trying to go as fast as possible, but sometimes it's uh, unavoidable. As, as you see here, I have it organized in terms of, you know, the first, uh, the main compartment, second one, and, and finally, you know, you have a, another one here, one, two, three, and, a, and an exterior pocket. And there is a logic to all of this. And these are the things that you wouldn't be needing in much of a hurry. You have your water bottle on the side so as to be drinking. You have the bigger ones so as to be refilling as needed. As we approach the exterior of the bag, we get to the, some of the stuff that you're going to be needing in more of a hurry. In the middle pocket, another uh, space uh, blanket or emergency blanket, whatever way you want to call it making sure I'm not forgetting anything moving to the next one wallet with cash and some coins in there cash is just uh, very important it has it's, cash is maybe one of the most useful things in all this kit and I'm gonna be talking about this later as we approach the end of the video but I want to have in this bag some cash and even some coins in case I just need them 
still surprising how many kids you see that have uh, rifles, uh, handguns, uh, five, six, seven loaded magazines and not a single cent, not a single coin or, or money. Anyway, here you have tangled there a phone, a smartphone, useful just like money right it has it, it's one of those crucial things if i could just have maybe just two of these things in a real disaster in a real mess that i, I just find myself in a, in a tough in a tough spot maybe these two money and a cell phone would be enough maybe all of that stuff i'm not going to be needing maybe this is going to be enough so this is very important you have to have this in your kit uh, a very nice addition uh, in using combination with with your phone is a way of charging it sometimes you know if you keep it especially if you keep it in your kit it may be this charge so how are you going to be charging that battery bank this is actually a, a very good addition um, this is actually one that works there's lots of these things lots of these gadgets that don't work um, when the guys from waka waka asked me to review their product i told them you know what and most of these that I've seen don't actually work as well. If you want to send it my way, please do so. But if I see that it doesn't work, I'm not going to be recommending it to people. Fortunately enough, it does work very well. And I'm happy to say so. I mean, it, it has a, a charge, so it has to charge your phone a couple times, but then it has a solar panel. And this is a solar panel that actually works very well. With the kind of light that I have now, it's going to be charging well. Even when it's raining, it can charge. Little by little, a small charge. but a little bit sometimes is all you need to make an emergency phone call much better than not having it then of course it has um, a lantern there which is quite bright very effective as well and you have that those little light lights there indicating the charge of course none of this would be of much use without the proper cable uh, ideally, I would like to have a, a phone that uses a USB port. Now I'm using Android, so uh, I, I much rather have something that uses uh, a USB uh, port as well and Android, which I like better than, than Apple. But uh, for an emergency phone, it's going to be get, getting me online. It has Wi-Fi as well, you know, so it, not, not ideal. And whenever I get around to it, I'm going to be upgrading to something that suits me better uh, based on what I currently use on a daily basis. But that's uh, pretty much the idea around that. Matches, you know, way of starting a fire. These are actually uh, UCO stormproof matches. Pretty big and one of the fastest ways of uh, honestly starting a fire, right? Fire still has a place, but when you need a flame in a fire fast, this is one of the best ways. The, the matchbox is not actually a, a, as tough as it looks. I think it already has a small crack somewhere. You know, not ideal, but it is one of the best matchbox and matches combination out there. Little notepad for taking notes, um, not ideal. I think it would be better to have one of those write in rain type of uh, notebooks, you know, those that are waterproof. Uh, so as to make, uh, take notes, leave messages, uh, make a little uh, map or uh, calculations and such, leave messages in, on the go. Uh, that's the kind of thing that you want to have. Uh, paper for in a kit such as this. Here we reach a flashlight, and I have more than just. Let me get there. This is a, a Streamlight Sidewinder Compact uh, Two. Uh, the nice thing about this flashlight, which I've done reviews about before is that you have several modes in terms of, of light color and, and most of all the, the greatest thing about it is, is that it uses pretty much any battery you can, you can throw at it it uses either a double AA, a triple a or cr123a battery any of those will be working in this flashlight which that kind of versatility can be a uh, priceless right so uh, a flashlight there then i have um, a proper your more powerful flashlight. This is the the Thrunite T Sen T, which I haven't done a review yet. Uh, about nine nine hundred lumens, if I'm remembering correctly. Now the great thing about this one is that it's rechargeable, and it's actually rechargeable using a USB port, so you can actually recharge it with that battery pack that I have there. 
So using it along with the cable that it comes with, you can just hook it up, connect it, and recharge your flashlights. And it's very, very bright. I want to have more than just one flashlight. I want to have, again, if, if I need to find someone in, in the dark, if I need uh, to signal for help. But most of all, this is the kind of thing that for uh, looking for someone that is lost or something like that, a, a powerful flashlight, a, a thousand lumen flashlight, it can be very, very uh, important to have during uh, uh, an emergency. Oh yeah, it also has this uh, side switch that it has here. This also um, starts blinking in red and such uh, when uh, it's losing charge. So it's also letting you know whenever you, you test and check your gear, when you turn it on, it's going to be letting you know that the battery is, is running out. You know, those things are, are nice things to have in a, in a kit such as this, so as to not be caught by surprise by batteries that are suddenly dead when you need them the most. Okay, now we're getting closer to the end of, of the pack. We open this here, stuff that you want to have easily accessible. We have another flashlight. This is a Phoenix EO5 more of a general use flashlight. As you see already three flashlights for a family, it makes sense, at least to me it does, because if, if, if it's dark out there and you need a, a flashlight, probably someone else needs it too. So I like the idea of having more so as to give. And yeah, as you see, it's covering different uh, types of, of battery as well. This one, it's, it's not awfully bright. I think it's like 20 lumens and so, but and as you see, I have them in, in different compartments. I have this one hooked here, so as to have it uh, easily available. I just know that opening this pocket, hanging here, even if I'm not seeing very well, I'm gonna be finding this flashlight that allows me to see. I have this carabiner. This is by Leatherman. <laughs> it's just, you know, for opening bottles. Not, not, not a ton of use, it's just linking the, the flashlight there. Yes, a proper uh, multi-tool. Uh, this is a, a Leatherman Sidekick. It is affordable. I think it's going for 30 bucks. You have a smaller blade. Remember that I have that uh, bigger uh, sharpened pry bar type of knife? This is something that I'm gonna be using if I need something a little bit more um, for more uh, uh, detailed type of work with this little blade here. And in spite of not being awfully expensive, it's, it is a proper multi-tool. It's not something very small. You actually have a, a set of pliers that, th that works. And if I'm uh, even comparing it to my uh, EDC multi-tool, the Lerman Charge, as you see the pliers are, are not that different. This is a very capable multi-tool just for uh, you know, prying stuff in, you know, cutting wire even. You can do it and it's even spring-loaded so that is a, an advantage there as well. What else we have here? Flat roll of, of duct tape, ton of uses, more candy for quick energy, Kleenex, pen so as to use along with the, the notepad, an actual lighter, wrap a roll of, of bags. These little bags always come in handy for you know waste disposal for uh, you know carrying you know, little stuff. In here kept we have a bag with a radio and a map and a couple batteries. Same batteries are used in two of the flashlights that I have. The radio, if there's everything goes to hell, FM radio is gonna be the way in which you somewhat learn what's going on around you. The map, in case everything is broken and not working, the map will let you know the options that you have, where you are, how to navigate and such. In terms of, of a compass, I have one in the kit that I was showing you guys before in the little um, survival tin kit. I have a compass there. I have a compass in the cell phone. I have a compass in my daily use watch. And I even have a compass as well in my daily use cell phone. So basically, that's going to be covering such need. 
keep the batteries out of the radio because you know there's always the possibility of this um, you know bursting and leaking ruining everything in there and one more thing notice how we have things you know that the clothes kept in a, in a ziploc bag wet clothes are not going to be doing you much good and a wet map and wet radio it's not going to be helping much either finally we reach the exterior oh actually no actually have you know we have the exterior pocket here and this one you have a uh, little first aid kit i did add a little bit of ibuprofen i did add a little bit of super glue a little bit more uh, band-aids and such but a, pretty much a, a basic you know cheap little kit nice case you know, strong and such uh, but um, just so as to get you out of a little uh, injuries nothing too drastic for something that is uh, more drastic you have uh, four more batteries for the radio and flashlights and soap let's clean up for uh, something uh, of more of a serious injury more of a serious emergency uh, emergency i have in the exterior pocket so as to know where it is just zip it open and you get out your a couple more respirators all right remember more people not only spirits but especially for a family you need more so a couple respirators here as well and uh, a kit which includes Celox gauze so as to stop uh, serious bleeding Celox gauze does save lives if you're you know uh, not only just shot which you know sometimes depending on where you are maybe not as as realistic even though it can happen always but if you're shot if you're stabbed if you're involved in a car accident and you're bleeding or there's a, a terrorist attack as you know Boston someone is bleeding bad yourself someone else you need to stop that bleeding Celox gauze can save your life besides that I have a an Israeli bandage or emergency bandage which it can help stop uh, some other wounds as well uh, the bleeding in some cases it has a, a compression band a, a compression bar it's not a, a proper tourniquet which I do not have I have a 550 paracord there gonna be getting there in a second but I don't have a a, a cat tourniquet which may have a place um, you know there's ways of, of stopping bleeding here as well then I have one of these uh, cold presses this uh, instant ice which in many cases comes in very handy as well and a spare set of uh, of gloves you need those so as to help anyone first put these on yourself and help others then okay and that's pretty much what we have there then on this side in this pocket because sometimes you just need to access it quickly I have 550 paracord anything that you quickly need to tie up I have a, a hank of, of, of cord which I can just grab with a single hand you know, pull it like that and it starts uh, unwinding as needed same thing for this other one another hank uh, of cord there sometimes having uh, two uh, hanks uh, separately it's, it's quicker you don't have a, a big old roll of, of cord this is uh, sometimes easier to uh, to use a, as you need and a couple more you know little bags for disposing of stuff and then on the back pocket here I have another roll of gorilla this is actually gorilla duct tape you know very strong lots of uses for it a toilet paper kept in a bag so as to keep it dry because what toilet paper is not a much use and a toothbrush and that's basically it now this is a, a realistic use a uh, bug out bag it's not a massive bag you can just grab this go if you have a uh, very little time now if I just had say a, a minute I have to grab something and leave this is the first bag that I'm gonna be getting I, I can lose everything else everything else that I've shown you guys so far can just throw this away uh, I wouldn't be uh, missing it that much not the case for this bag this is my VIP bag, very important papers bag or documents bag. I didn't invent the, the, the concept of it. It's something that's been around forever. And those of us that have a grandparents or immigrants, they, they had in their house uh, a little box, maybe in the, in the closet somewhere, a box with their papers, with their documents uh, from you know, their, their passports, their birth certificates, all these papers that were proof of identity back in the day. Uh, all those were kept together. This is basically a, an upgraded version of that concept, keeping it in a bag, 
that is quickly uh, accessible. So here you're gonna be keeping your passports, birth certificates, any important papers or documents that you have. Here you're also gonna be keeping a USB drive with your important files and copy of everything else. All your important documentation, scanned or copies of it in a USB drive here as well. Here is where you're gonna be keeping cash, the emergency cash that you have, you keep it here as well. In, in, you also wanna have here um, any amount of uh, precious metal, especially gold, silver, and here is where uh, gold has an edge over silver, which is much more, um, much more bulky. You know, in terms of, of weights, silver weights a lot more. So if you have a, a few gold coins or whatever it is that you have, you can keep some of it here, and also a set of keys, a spare set of car keys. In case you have to leave your house in a hurry and you cannot run back to the kitchen looking for the keys, you have your spare set of, of car keys here and spare set of house keys as well. Finally, if you have any, any particularly important family heirlooms, jewelry, something, you know, smaller trinkets that you're very close to, um, a copy of, of photographs, maybe you're gonna be keeping in the USB drive, but anything particularly important for you that you wouldn't wanna have uh, lost in a, in a fire, you keep it here. Uh, you could maybe even make a case for somewhat of a slightly bigger um, uh, VIP bag and, and keeping a, a handgun here as well. Maybe you could do that a, as well, right? If you're not gonna be having it in uh, something maybe compatible with your uh, concealed carry weapon, right? Makes uh, sense to have it here in this bag. This is the most important part of the bug out bag kit and it's something that's often not covered. People forget about passports, people forget about the importance of cash and your important documents such as birth certificates and such. Guys, um, yeah, I'm gonna be doing another video separate on, on night specifically because it's a pretty extensive uh, topic on its own. But again, if this is something that you prefer to read about instead of, uh, of watching or you just wanna check that out as well, and it's the chapter of my book, Bugging Out and Relocating, the, the chapter of, of the bug out back, I'm gonna be posting completely, so it's gonna be there in the link to my, uh, to my website in case you prefer to read something like that as well. Folks, I think I've covered everything. Remember to subscribe, share, take care. See you on our next video. Have a great weekend.